Welcome back to TCS Star Frogs. My name is Travis, and today I'm going to talk about bromeliads. So this was a requested video from Sven2, and uh, it's taken me a little bit of time to get around to doing this, but I wanted to make sure that I do get around to those requested videos because you guys are watching these, and if you guys want to see some, I want to make sure that I make the content for you. So I don't particularly use a lot of bromeliads in my tanks because they do require uh, specialized care. Most bromeliads don't prefer to be planted right in the substrate. If you plant bromeliads in the substrate of a terrarium, if the substrate gets overly moist, they will rot and they will die. Uh, another thing about bromeliads is that they require pretty high lighting depending on the species. There are some lower light bromeliads, but most of the really colorful bromeliads that you see that would be attractive to put in your vivariums, those are going to require high light and actually quite a bit more ventilation than a lot of terrariums have. So overall, I think that there is a place for bromeliads in terrariums, but I don't particularly like them because they require extra care that uh, doesn't always correlate with the frogs. Now, for the frogs that breed in bromeliads, um, I do use bromeliads in those species of frogs' tanks, and they are very important because um, as much as I could put you know, a glass vial or plastic vials in those tanks to uh, have the frogs de deposit their tadpoles in, the bromeliads actually work much better just because the plant is actually going to help uptake some of that waste from the tadpoles and um, overall they do a better job of, of raising the tadpoles in my opinion than uh, another container which you could just place in the tank for the, the frogs to deposit their tadpoles in. So for, for certain tanks I do use bromeliads and I'll go over a couple of the bromeliads that I like and that work really well for me but like I said I don't use a ton of them. There are many different types of bromeliads that do great in terrariums, but the species that I like the most are Neoregalia. They come in a wide range of shapes and sizes and are readily available from many online retailers. Most of them that you'll find for the terrarium hobby don't get too big and that's what makes them really nice. There are some species that get rather large and there's also some that come with amazing colors especially if you look into some of the more expensive hybrids. This is why Neoregalia are some of my favorite bromeliads. They're also easy to mount, which I'll show you guys how to do a little bit later in this video. So as I mentioned before, if you plant bromeliads right into the substrate in a vivarium, most times it will be too saturated with uh, water or moisture, and the bromeliad will end up rotting and eventually dying most likely. So the best way to plant bromeliads is by mounting them to something. I prefer to mount them to uh, some type of wood, generally driftwood or a uh, type of manzanita. Um, anything like that will work great in the wild. They're going to grow epiphytically off of trees. And so this is the best way that I've had success growing bromeliads. Sometimes if you have a thick enough background, you can also mount them um, onto the background. But I'll try to show you guys as well how I mount bromeliads and hopefully that helps you grow some happy bromeliads for your vivarium. So when you're mounting a bromeliad, you want to find a bromeliad with a nice stallone, which is this woody part here of the bromeliad. And you basically want to take some shears and you want to cut down far enough so that you have a good amount of that Stallone left. All right. So the next thing you want to do to mount a bromeliad is take the Stallone, which is this woody part of the bromeliad uh, that comes off the base of the parent bromeliad and you want to get a drill bit that matches or is a little bit smaller than the size of the Stallone. And this is important that it's maybe a little bit smaller 
That way when we drill through the wood, which I'm gonna try to drill through uh, this piece of wood here, then it makes it a little bit easier to make sure that you get a snug fit and the bromeliad won't move as much. And then over time, it'll actually root into place. And that's how I've mounted all the bromeliads in this tank and also these ones over here. All right, so now we've got our drill bit and we're gonna go ahead and drill the piece of wood that we want so that the bromeliad will fit. Another important thing to remember when doing this is the angle that this Stallone is at. So you want to drill at whatever angle this is so the bromeliad sits how you want it to sit. So I'm going to drill, you know, kind of at, at this angle here so that this bromeliad sits just like that. So go ahead and drill this real quick. So once you've gone all the way through, you can kind of go ahead and test to see if this will fit. And this doesn't quite fit, so I'm going to just take the drill bit and move it around a little bit just to get a more snug fit. So let's test this out again and see if it fits now. And it doesn't quite fit. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and drill with a little bit larger drill bit. All right, so I went ahead and switched this drill bit out for one that is slightly larger. And I'm going to go ahead and just bore this hole out a little bit more. So that should work. All right, so there we go. And that bromeliad fits in there pretty good. I should mention that before I did all this, I did take the frogs out of this tank. These are the frogs that uh, normally live in here. They're a pair of Bastimentos pumilio. So uh, I just wanted to Make sure you guys knew that there's no frogs in here. I would not drill the tank if there were frogs in there as it could be pretty dangerous for the frogs. And as far as all the uh, debris that it made, you can pretty much just take a pump up sprayer and spray that down into the substrate and the plants will use that as nutrients. And that is how you mount a bromeliad. So I hope that was helpful. All right, so here's the tank after I added a few bromeliads in there and cleaned the glass and did a little bit of trimming and now I'll put the frogs back in there. I generally don't like to take the frogs out of the tank as that is a little bit stressful for them and might disturb any breeding they're doing but since these are pomilio and they won't really breed without these bromeliads I figured it was worth it to pull them out and add these in so hopefully that gets this pair going and hopefully get a few froglets in there in a couple months. All right, everyone, thanks for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give it a like. And if you haven't subscribed already, I'd love it if you'd subscribe to my channel. I hope that this helped you growing bromeliads. And if you guys have any other questions, comments, or suggestions for future videos, please let me know in the comments down below. I'll leave all my links in the description for all my social media. And if you guys want to check out my website, it's tcsstartfrogs.com. And if you guys want to purchase anything there, use that code FROG10 for 10% off your purchase. Thank you guys for watching, and you guys have a great day.